Hurricane Ian tore through Florida's west coast, killing more than 100 people and leaving widespread devastation. Many places left unrecognizable and impassable. The long road to recovery is just beginning. Joining me now is Congressman Mario Diaz Ballard, who represents Florida's current 25th district, which is a part of that area that's now devastated after Hurricane Ian. Welcome back to Impact, Congressman. Thank you, Thank Jackie. You. Thank you so much. So you had an opportunity to tour the area recently. Can you describe to us what you saw? Yeah, Jackie, I've been there in person. I've also flown over it with the Coast Guard. Uh, it is dramatic. There are some areas that look like um, like the worst parts after Hurricane Andrew, like Country Walk, except mm -hmm. that it's not just wind, it's also water, it's flooding. And so I fear that, that uh, uh, we're going to continue to see that um, death toll continue to rise uh, because there are folks that I think may be still in homes that are totally devastated, that are rubble, or that in many cases may have washed away. Yeah, it, it is horrific. They're still going door to door and looking for victims. Yeah, and you see the heroism, right? I mean, these, mm -hmm. these horrible moments also bring people together. You, you know, there are, there are thousands, there's an army an army of uh, linemen and women uh, trying to reestablish power. There are not-for-profit organizations, religious groups, individuals. Uh, look, the, the uh, Consul General of Israel, for example, on his own, actually went and sent, sent aid. You know, these are not, this is not to get publicity. This is just, this is the kind of thing that you're seeing, and we see that all over the place. But, but again, the suffering is, is intense. Well, people are still wanting a food and yeah. water. Gas is scarce. Yeah as we've seen on, on so many occasions. And you have said that you are going to ensure that the federal resources continue to help those in need. How are you going to do that? Yeah. Well, again, first, we're trying to do what we can on the ground. You know, the mm -hmm. city of Hialeah, everybody's mobilizing. Uh, folks that were not hit is mobilizing to help. But the, I think there's going to be the need for maybe at least one, maybe two, what we call supplemental appropriation bills to help in the cost of rebuilding, of helping people that are going through this. Uh, this is really devastating, but I, I'm very confident that there'll be strong bipartisan support to make sure that the folks get what they need in this in this very difficult hour of need. How are the federal funds and the state funds, how's the federal government and the state government working together to help this community? Jackie, there are going to be issues and there are going to be disagreements, but right now, very, very well. Very, very well. I think part of that is because Florida is probably the most prepared state in the country for this kind of, of event. Uh, I think the governor has shown great leadership. You know, he's very focused. Uh, he's a no-nonsense focused individual. That's very, very helpful. Uh, and then the fact that, you know, the entire congressional delegation in the area that it's affected, that is affected, and others have been very engaged in it. You know, I, I called the postmaster general at night on his cell phone uh, because we had an issue with an area that I represent that got hit. And so that coordination so far has been really, really good. Not that there will not be issues because something of this magnitude, there are obviously going to be obstacles. What was that called for? To the Because the, an area that I represent, uh, which got hit by water, mm -hmm. uh, it's Ever Everglades City, it's Chakalowski, it's Everglades. Um, um, uh, anyways, uh, an area that, I, that it's, it's three communities, by the mm -hmm. way, in one, and they're, uh, it's a ship, it's a, it's a, it's an old town, Florida place. They were underwater, and then they were told, the post office there flooded, uh, and they were told, well, they're going to have to get their mail 40 miles away. They don't have autom automobiles. Mm -hmm. uh, these are poor people to start with, but they and don't have automobiles. those who do don't have gas. They don't have gas. They don't, their, automobile, uh, their cars were underwater, and so, and so when we were in touch with the post office folks, they were saying, oh, it's under review. No, there's no time to be under review. Mm -hmm. So I called the postmaster general personally, and I said, look, with all due respect, no time to review. This has to be done, and sure enough, today, there's a temporary post office there. I want to talk about climate change because a yeah. lot has been discussed about these storms getting bigger, getting stronger. And, and more of them. And more of them. And a yeah. lot of scientists are indicating that it's due to climate change. There was an article in the New York Times um, that was pretty much blasting some Republicans, but they were commending you. Well, they admitted what is hard not to. You know, look, I. everybody knows that I have been very effective in controlling spending while making sure that we emphasize things that are important. In, and to me, important is the state of Florida and the areas in South Florida that I represent. So I have brought, according to the New York Times, it's true, I created a pot of $12 billion for remediation. That $1.4 billion came straight to Florida. To do what? To elevate roads, to elevate uh, facilities, to harden places from storms. And let me tell you what to me do you, is... Do you blame climate change for that? Uh, look, 
is it is the is the planet warming? Absolutely, it is. Do I believe that humans uh, impact it? Of course, we impact everything. Now, here's the part that infuriates me: all of these proposals from the left, you know, the whole Paris Accord and all these things. If you ask the question, which isn't asked a lot, great. How much will that do to lower the temperature of climate? The answer is absolutely zero to, I mean, nothing negligible over 50 years, assuming that China goes along, which they're not, assuming that India goes along, which they're not. So this is like feel good, but wasted money. What I think we should be doing is what works for a fraction of the cost, mitigation, strengthening, uh, elevating because that helps if it's sea rise that helps if there's a storm that helps for things that we know are real and unlike all of this other feel-good stuff that they're spending wasting all of this money it's hurting our economy it's actually the policies that the president has instituted to help uh, supposedly curb uh, co2 emissions have actually increased the production of co2 emissions in the united states which is interesting but none of that does anything anything what does work is remediation, hardening, elevation, things that are common sense, which we can do for a fraction of the cost. And I'm very proud that I have been leading that effort for many, many years successfully. Again, even the New York Times, uh, has not exactly a beacon of right-wing uh, conservatism, right, uh, has had to admit that I have gotten a lot done in that, in I, that way. I want to quickly address the, the immigration situation yeah. now in this country, because you have said that there's a crisis at the southern border and that the Biden administration needs to reverse their open border policy. Yes. Those are your words. Correct. Um, what do you say then, and what is your uh, reaction to what's happening right now with some of the governors, including Governor DeSantis in the state of Florida and Governor Abbott from the state of Texas that are busing migrants to Washington, to Martha's Vineyard and the like? No, it's, you know, I think that what that it exposes the deep hypocrisy, hypocrisy. You have places that call themselves sanctuary cities, communities. Martha, Martha's, village, uh, Martha's Village is one of those who said, you know, we welcome all immigrants. We want open borders. Yes, fine, as long as they stay in El Paso and if, as long as they stay in McAllen, Texas. They don't want them in their communities and their areas. Their areas. And the governor sent a bus of 50, just 50 individuals, to Martha's Vineyard. And what happened? All hell break, broke loose. Then they don't want them, right? They said there are no jobs. There's no resources. One of the wealthiest places in the planet, where if you look at their local newspaper, there are a, a, a ton of jobs available. So you see, but this is, yeah, open borders for other places, not for them. And so the you sad think part it was is, the right I think it was, the, to yeah, to highlight the hypocrisy and the importance of having somebody, the, this administration, focus on the tragedy that's taking place in the southern border. Why is it a tragedy? Because girls and women are being raped and sexually abused at, at levels that we have never seen historically. Fentanyl is coming in at levels that, you know, and killing America's, Americans in levels that we haven't seen. It's a violation of the rule of law. It's a humanitarian crisis. And, Jackie, those that logic would dictate probably have the best shot at, at having uh, real cases of asylum, their cases are not being reviewed because it is such a broken system. It is broken for our national security interests. It is broken for our economic interests. It is broken for those folks that try to come to the United States who are being abused and who make the decision now. And this is what this president, the Democrats have done, who make the decision as to who comes across the southern border are the narco terrorist cartels. This has to stop. What about Cubans? Because I know that there were a group of Cubans, 22 in particular, that you had criticized the Biden administration for sending back. Isn't that a double standard? There is a group of Cubans that were able to, to grab a boat and come over. And here's my fear that we've seen this in the past when there was a, in 2003, I believe, Jackie, there was uh, some Cubans that took a, a, a boat and they were able to basically they stole it from the regime. They came over here. The U.S. sent them back and they were executed. That was too they were literally shot and executed with no real trials. And my fear is, again, that that's going to happen again. Those who have the most legitimate potential claims are not being looked at. This is a great case of that because of the travesty that's occurring on the southern border. It has to stop. It's in nobody's best interest. The only people that are benefiting are the narco cartels. We're going to have to leave it there. Congressman, as always, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thank you.